Um, we're delighted to welcome you all to the high level conversation on what the JAFMA GCF calls a long term vision on complementarity, coherence, and collaboration. Back in 2021, the JAFMA GCF launched this LTV really to enhance and clarify the way forward for the two institutions and multiple funds to work together and help countries and to, to enhance the planning, the implementation, as well as outcomes of the initiatives that JAFA and GCF can support. So we think that this is a, a very timely occasion for the JAFA and GCF to have this um, event here to take stock of progress made so far since last year and uh, talk about the ongoing work, but also more importantly to hear from the countries um, that are uh, much better placed than the, um, the, the Secretariat headquarters to tell us what is going on in your countries, what are your perspectives, and what are your specific expectations for the JAF and GCF to work with the countries to enhance your climate action. So we have both from the JAF and GCF, uh, both the CEO as well as the executive, uh, exec executive director. So we have the highest level represented from the JAF and GCF to really tell you what we're going, what, what has been going on. So without much ado, let us get started. And I'd like to request Mr. Daniele Violetti, Senior Director of the Programs Coordination of the UNFCC Secretariat, and very, very well known to all of us. So Daniele, please. Thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, Minister Carlos Manuel, Madeleine, very nice to be on the same podium, and, and Yannick too. Good to see you. Um, just a few words on the side of the Climate Change Secretariat and on behalf of uh, our Executive Secretary. Um, it's clear, and, and even more now at this COP, the COP for implementation, how uh, critical is the role of climate finance, uh, uh, but not only in the, in the sense of channeling to the right places where it's most needed, but also the fact that it needs to be scaled up and brought to the level that is uh, urgently need to respond to the challenges. So the discussion today with the with the financial mechanism uh, uh, of the UFCCC is so important looking at uh, uh, long-term vision. Um, the numbers unfortunately are very uh, um, you know, low in terms of what is needed in, in scale, uh, particularly for adaptation finance. This We, we all know about that uh, and how to fill the gap uh, but also how to have this coherence uh, moving forward. So four um, points on my side uh, um, and, and uh, highlighting what are, in our view, the relevant aspects. Uh, um, but also to, you know, in the other side of the conference center where the negotiations are, um, we know how complicated is the overall climate finance package, how challenging is with the number of issues to be coming to a close. Um, but it's all to indicate that in the phase of implementation of our process, finance is at the pillar. So these points are um, the relevant aspects that I would like to share with you. Developing countries need predictability um, on uh, projected levels of climate finance to implement their NDCs and NAPs, uh, but also the operating entities of the financial mechanism need to work together closely to deliver on these needs and priorities. Coherence and the complementarity of the funds is therefore essential to ensure finance is delivered effectively at lowest cost at a minimal effort. And while there has been progress on fund-to-fund uh, -fund arrangements uh, uh, at adaptivity and national programming level, further dialogue uh, uh, is definitely on, uh, needed in, on the side of the complementarity, complementarity aspect uh, and the um, effective delivery. Now, another critical point is uh, accessibility of, of climate finance. We, we all know that uh, um, parties, uh, countries are continually repeating uh, that yeah, one, one aspect is the, the scale, but at the same time, accessibility. So anything that can be done in the space of uh, accelerating procedures, uh, simplifying them and having them harmonize between and within funds, uh, uh, it's in our view definitely uh, going to improve the overall narrative on, on the complication associated with climate finance. So um, of course we, we, we are not saying that there will not 
need to have those important and fundamental checks and balances. This is out of discussion, but it's just an encouragement to GCF and Jeff to really, as very strong uh, partners of the process, uh, um, having this discussion on the long-term vision and see how this can help this critical aspect. So uh, I can stop here. And of course, we, as the Climate Science Secretary, will continue to be uh, honored to be partnering with both uh, of, uh, of you, but also with all uh, other countries in this phase as we move into implementation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniela, for that and the insights as well as we did here very clearly the expectations of predictability of finance as well as enhancing and streamlining access and the role that the two entities uh, of the operating entity can uh, work together on that one. So message well received. So why don't we now move on to the, um, the uh, perspectives from the heads of the GCF and the JAF. And uh, I have the pleasure of introducing Yannick Lemerick the uh, GCF Executive Secretary, who needs no introduction, as well as Carlos Manuel Rodriguez, Jeff CEO and Chairperson, who also needs no introduction. So I'm going to, I guess, ask Yannick to go first, perhaps? Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Many, many thanks for joining this event. Daniel, it's very nice to uh, see you. And uh, many thanks, uh, Chisi. The uh, GCF and the GEF together represent about 4% of uh, the UNFCC finance. So right now, uh, we must be around 90 billion, I would say. And uh, if you we take uh, GCF 2.5 billion for climate and GEF, you have what, two, 2 billion for climate, so 500. So we have 3 billion between the two funds. So why are you even bothering one crusade to come here? The, uh, because actually, we, beyond the money that we have, we have a key function. We are critical hubs of the climate finance architecture. The, uh, what our, uh, our business model, we are not uh, a development infrastructure bank. We are not separate uh, the, uh, technical agencies. We are investment fund. What we do is that so we work with a large number of partners and uh, we help them in, uh, for example, if you have never worked on climate or on biodiversity, we help this commercial or uh, public, private or public partner to develop their first climate project, to develop their first biodiversity project. And we often de-risk them. We will basically provide uh, some uh, different type of finance to make it for them less risky to come with their uh, first uh, project. The, or less risky to start uh, to support a, a new climate uh, solution. So. The, uh, the purpose of uh, GCF and GEF is to be uh, catalytic. Our, we are a drop, but our purpose is to be a very powerful drop. And uh, it's also a drop that is the only real source of finance for climate strategy. And so our job is to try to come with, to help countries to come with a long-term vision, to align different type of uh, players, and to serve as a linchpin uh, of the climate finance architecture. So for us, if GCF and the GEF are to harmonize the performance indicators, are to harmonize the origination processes, suddenly it's all our partners who will be harmonizing their performance indicators, their origination processes. GCF works uh, with more than 200 delivery, delivery partners, uh, 114 accredited entities from some of the largest commercial banks in the world to civil society organization. Uh, we have also the GEF works with less partner, uh, 18, but works with five convention, while we work with only one convention. So when you bring together the multi-convention dimension of GEF with a very, very large uh, partnership of uh, GCF, you have two organizations that can really move the needle in terms of uh, simplification to access finance and harmonization to access finance and uh, access at scale because we can use our money as a catalyst to shift much, much larger financial flow. So coherence and complementarity when it comes to this two form is actually a way to respond 
to a number of the uh, expectation of uh, our partners. So I was asked to say a few words on where, what have, where do we stand right now. The, uh, the, uh, we are, next year, we are to launch uh, five pilots in uh, Fiji, Jamaica, Rwanda, Uganda, and Bangladesh to try to have a joint programming. Building on the, on the work we have been doing for the past few years, and uh, this will enable us to basically see what kind of uh, project GCF should, should finance, what kind of project GEF should finance, how can, which one we should co-finance, what kind of instruments we can use. Through the practice of trying to harmonize uh, our programming to come with joint programming, we should be able to identify some of the policy roadblocks that we are facing. That, and after I go to our respective board saying, if we, if we really want to be serious about complementarity and coherence, that's the changes we need to make in our way of doing business. And if we do that, we will dramatically simplify access to our finance and access to a much broader uh, climate finance pool. You know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, thanks. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Janik and um, Hello, everybody here. Um, this is the last time. Well, let me go back. This is the second time that we're working together here in the Common Pavilion. And I hope that this becomes a very strong trend within the GCF and GEF. But unfortunately, this is the last time that we'll have Janik with us at the head of our GCF in a COP in a joint initiative like this one. And I want everybody here to give a big round of applause to Yannick for the fabulous work that he has been doing in the last many years with his board and his staff in putting together such a strong, strong fund on the GCF. This is wonderful. We'll be missing you. And your legacy is here. Your legacy is here. You just mentioned a few of the very important elements of what we have been able to come in the last uh, in the last year, the last year we've been able to achieve um, uh, yeah, progress in identifying which are the synergies within our funds, uh, based on our you know competitive uh, differences. We were able to understand how and when we can be able to reduce gaps. Um, address uh, the, uh, the overlapping and really complement in ways that makes coherence a very strong element of the work that uh, we do. Also, for us at the GF, it's extremely important as a grant making mechanism, it's extremely important to really understand the different financial modalities that the GCF has been developing. Because at the end of the day, what we are doing together is relevant is uh, extremely important and even though our financial capacities are really limited based on the huge challenges that we have in front of us and you may all consider that the gcf budget the gf budget is just a small drop of water in the ocean this drop of water can be extremely extremely powerful in moving the needle uh, ahead Today, we will be having the possibility to go in detail on the many different things that we have found positive complementarities, where we have achieved positive steps, but also this is an, a great opportunity for us to be able to share with all of you the work ahead. I'm extremely satisfied that we already have defined geographies where we will be proving the case of the work that we do. So the last element, which is extremely important, and is a challenge that we are all confronted with, is how do we manage knowledge met? How do we share in a very effective manner uh, the learned lessons? There are multiple dimensions on, on this element. And, and today, we, we, early today, we had a conversation with the head of the, the climate funds on how do we go forward in terms of uh, maximizing our le learned lessons and create common across the, the funds, common efforts by which we can capitalize on those very positive uh, learn lessons 
And this is something that is extremely relevant, extremely important, because by doing this, we'll be able to maximize and optimize uh, the resources in the context of the, the, the synergies. So I look forward uh, for today's e event. Uh, um, we'll be hearing for, from the countries as well. Uh, and I, I look forward uh, to be uh, next year once more with our colleagues from the GCF being able to provide uh, sound uh, data on the design and expected outcomes that uh, we'll be doing together in these uh, geographies. So thank you so much, uh, Chis. Thank you so much. Uh, you heard very clearly the, the embodiment of commitment as well as partnership from the two heads. It doesn't get any better, from, it get better than this. Um, any burning questions from the audience to the two heads at this point? No, crystal clear. So with that, um, I would like to now move to the um, to hear directly from the countries today. We're very honored and privileged to have three countries uh, represented here. We have Trinidad and Tobago, we have Senegal and also Senegal representing the LDC group, and we also have a representative from Rwanda. So we're very keen to understand your views and expectations from the JEF and GCF. I know you have expectations and views on the JEF and the GCF, but how about the JEF and GCF together here? And uh, let me first start with um, uh, the, the minister from Trinidad and Tobago, and we're very honored that you could actually come and join us. Um, it's, um, we have Honorable Penelope Beckles Robinson, who is the Minister of Planning and Development from Trinidad and Tobago. Excellency, can you please share your experiences working with the JAF and GCF and your perspectives and expectations on how the two institutions presented here can be help to you and other CIS, for instance, um, to address your climate change priorities. Excellency, the floor is yours, and let me find a microphone for you. <laughs> thank you, Annie. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, and let me, of course, uh, thank uh, Jeff and GCF for the opportunity to participate in this panel. Um, so the GCF already provides readiness funding to assist in the development of full funding proposals, building capacity, and enabling the country to engage with GCF and access further climate finance sources. Trinidad and Tobago has recently begun accessing the GCF, and we are just wrapping up two of our very first readiness projects, the NDA strengthening project and improving the monitoring system for climate change impacts on the agriculture sector in Trinidad and Tobago. Our experiences from these projects have proven to be a valuable capacity building, one with many lessons to be learned. However, issues related to the issue of implementation phase a role, specifically the frequent non-aligned of plan execution in the project document versus actual implementation on the ground. Um, the other issue has to do with the fact that we feel that this is an area that can benefit from a critical review of the construct of the project document and the actual implementation with a view to incrementally increasing efficiency and most important, alignment. This observation can be generally applied to GEF projects that we have implemented in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, we have benefited from the enabling activity implementation across thematic areas with funding from Jeff. In this regard, I should like to highlight the need for implementation flexibility, especially on the part of implementation, implementing agencies, and in particular, relating to moving funds across budget lines to cater for what we will call unanticipated needs that may arise during the project, albeit all within the scope of the project, because we know that's very important. Additionally, accessing climate finance can be challenging in respect of all aspects of the project cycle. In this regard, it may be useful for additional NDA strengthening activities to include continuous technical capacity training to develop an, and critically analyze proposal in the development stage, as well as to be able to review proposals for potential project ideas submitted 
by accredited entities. This also includes proposals submitted to the NDA. As the NDA for Trinidad and Tobago, we are approached by many AEs who come with full ready proposal, many times very close to readiness, deadlines, and the pressure to use it or lose it is unnecessarily applied. During this time, depending on the nature of the proposals, we may require the expertise from other government and as well as from other stakeholders. The issue with capacity for adequate review also exists here, and it should be noted that we urge AEs to become familiar with the country processes and recognize the many levels of consultation required for provision of letters of no objection. We welcome the continued support provided by the readiness program and are currently in the process of developing concept note for areas of power generation, energy efficiency, transportation, as well as the health sector. Thus far, our engagement with Jeff and GCF has been extremely productive and we appreciate the efforts made by both entities aiding Trinidad and Tobago in achieving our climate goals. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency, for highlighting a lot of um, important issues here. You talked about the, um, the critical importance of project review, alignment and efficiency. You also talked about the flexibility as well as budget management. But overall, I think you talk, very touched, upon, touched upon the very importance of access access to climate finance and how we can make it simplified as well as align with your national priorities. And I think these are very important um, elements that, that we really need to be able to take into consideration. Okay, thank you, uh, Excellency. So now I have the pleasure of introducing um, Madeleine Diofsar, who is from Senegal. She's also the, uh, the chair of the LDC group, an important position representing the 46 LDCs at this uh, climate convention. So Madeleine, thank you so much for stepping in. And we would very much like to hear your views on the, the Jeff and uh, GCF working together from the perspective of Senegal, but also perhaps the perspective of the LDCs as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Daita Suzy, and uh, 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 thank you for inviting us uh, as Senegal and also as LDC chair to be part of this panel. I just want to thank the uh, minister, to thank uh, the CEO of uh, Jeff and also the secretary executive of uh, GCF uh, for their uh, word. I think they was really important in this uh, process, and we, we, we just want to 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 really appreciate this uh, uh, this collaboration between Jeff and and GCF, uh, uh, I think is really key because we are moving on a, on a, on a process where we're looking for more action on the ground, uh, more finance uh, be uh, uh, be uh, in uh, in a position for us uh, to implement our our NDCs our NAPs. So having this collaboration will I, I am sure will help uh, to to really increase. Uh, the, the action on the ground. Saying that, uh, first let me start by uh, Senegal, uh, uh, how we see that. Uh, yes, we used to have some project uh, with Jeff, so we're looking at as a demonstration enabling environment, and from that we move to the GCF to scale this project. So I can just take the case of um, uh, land degradation, Technology was being uh, 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 started with the Jeff in order really to see if uh, communities are in a position uh, uh, to, 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 to use this technology, to learn, to have capacity to develop such kind of technology. And now we're looking how to, to scaling up through the Jeff is the kind of uh, with uh, green belt, so it can be. Uh, 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 be used there. So this issue of this complementarity is something we have to maybe increase. I know we've, uh, we've uh, uh, NAPA, so regarding adaptation, what have you, you, Jeff used to, to, to allow to each LDC countries to have $40 million. So from this project, how we can maybe make a scale up uh, with the GCF, I think is also something we have to, to, to look for. And this point you have made, knowledge sharing. How we can build from what we have done from 
Jeff and use it for developing our our, our pipeline to be submitted to, to to GCF and maybe it can make things uh, uh, more 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 uh, more more quick and also look at the expedite uh, uh, process. I think this is really important. Another point I want to raise is uh, 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 maybe is the, the, the harmonization because I know you don't have the same tool between Jeff and GCF. Uh, 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 Jeff used to have some. Uh, agency who have been uh, working and GCF have some accredited entity. So <laughs> I, I'm checking how it's gonna work. So it will be good maybe uh, uh, because uh, maybe some di uh, uh, direct access through the accredited entity are not uh, uh, UN uh, 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 agency. So these are things maybe we have uh, to, to see. But this cooperation uh, uh, between uh, 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 direct entity and agency might be really important because it's gonna help scale up, scale up the action, but it's gonna also enhance the capacity within the country because we're looking for having more and more resources because we're talking about climate investment perspective. So we're talking about mainstreaming climate change in all policy. So building this cooperation will help a country to be in a best way to, to, to tackle climate change, whatever is coming, whatever instrument we're going to use. So I think this kind of perspective, we're looking for uh, you both to help us to build that. So these are maybe some elements I want to, to share at this level. But something is important, how we can simplify. <laughs> I think uh, uh, simplification is needed because we're talking about action on the ground. We're talking about urgency. So how to ensure that this simplification will allow us really actually to not wait until two years, three years to have something being implemented. So this is what I want to share at this level. And just thank you for having this approach, working together, helping country really to, 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 to achieve the objective, but also helping us because we need really to, to, to implement urgently uh, climate action on the ground. Thank you. Thank you, Madeline and Madam Chair for highlighting. This is all about action and I think um, you were very clear in ask, asking for simplification, harmonization. These are also the, the aims that Yannick pointed out along with uh, Carlos Manuel and also highlighting the importance of knowledge sharing moving forward. So now I have the pleasure to, to introduce Mr. Faustin Muniazi Kiwe. Uh, who is the Deputy Director General of Rwanda Environmental Management Agency. Um, Rwanda is incidentally one of the countries uh, that has been um, identified to carry out the joint investment planning exercise among the five countries that uh, we talked about, along with uh, Uganda, Bangladesh, Fiji, and um, uh, Jamaica. So, Mr. Faustin, could you please share your perspectives and expectations of uh, working with the Japan GCF? And if possible, we would very much appreciate if you can touch upon a little bit on what uh, your expectations are for this joint investment planning exercise that we're going to undertake together. So, over to you, Mr. Faustin. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Jeff and GCF for inviting Rwanda to come and uh, share our reflection on this uh, uh, future uh, joint venture or partnership. <laughs> uh, actually, Rwanda, we, we started uh, thinking about this partnership before. Uh, for the matter of fact, Rwanda Environment Management Authority was uh, is the GF operation focal point in Rwanda. And indeed, when GCF was created, uh, they wrote a letter to our Minister of Finance, and Minister of Finance nominated, indeed, Rwanda Environment Management Authority, so that we can make sure that we align the two uh, sources of funds, instead of having one focal point in one ministry, another focal point in another ministry, which are creating unnecessary deprecation. Uh, so uh, after starting the, the, the work of uh, supporting country to access uh, funds either from GIF or from GCF, 
since it was under the same roof, it is very easy uh, to connect and avoid uh, duplication. So uh, in terms of uh, ways of improvement, in terms of uh, this partnership, I want to emphasize on three things. One is related uh, to the access. Uh, Madden touched uh, on it. Uh, alignment of implementing agency is very crucial. As our experience in Rwanda, uh, Rema serving GCF, Rema serving Jeff, we have another good experience where our Minister of Environment was one of the first national accredited entity which got accreditation from GCF. But we got that ac accreditation among the first countries, first because we, we were accredited by Adaptation Fund. So they created a fast track scheme where we can get accreditation quickly. So that alignment of implementing entity matters a lot. Uh, I'm now advocating that in this journey, I think we need to think how uh, also Jeff can uh, foster the direct access and uh, allow uh, some accredited entity from uh, 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 accredited entity of GCF also to be accredited for Jeff and we streamline uh, the funds. Uh, so this can be helpful in terms of reducing time it is costing and in terms of uh, also building the capacity in the country. We, we, we are only relying on some few uh, knowledge people. So if we can concentrate them, uh, it will help direct access and alignment. Second, uh, I want to touch on uh, uh, implementation. We would rather see uh, Jeff and GCF multi-year programming instead of scattered projects. So while we are pulling together efforts from Jeff and GCF, uh, we need to uh, uh, make sure that countries also can bring uh, can shift from scattered and small projects to the long-term programming uh, 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 actions, so that it can be a multi-year programming uh, program, uh, uh, which can uh, uh, have various streams. Some some of the component can be uh, this year funded through Jeff Cycle. Then the following four years, it can be funded by the GCF. So it can create, it can, while we will be having a, a long-term programming, it will create an impact on the ground instead of having small scattered uh, uh, projects. Uh, third uh, is on uh, knowledge management. Uh, knowledge management is very crucial. We have listen learned in uh, some of the Jeff project we implemented. But how often do we use the listen learned from Jeff uh, uh, projects to develop proposals for GCF or to better implement the GCF? So we need to make sure that uh, 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 we knowledge management, uh, uh, we place it at the center of the implementation since this will only, uh, will be only the option of creating sustainability at ground. Uh, indeed, uh, starting, uh, uh, it is linked with the programming I was talking about. Because once you have a long-term program, uh, you will share uh, the knowledge, the success, and even the challenges and the key solutions you found 
for different projects in the in the past can inform uh, the formulation of the the new ones last but not least is on the flexibility on implementing uh, the project and the simplification of uh, procedures uh, Madeleine touched on it uh, we really need to see when we started, honestly, uh, some of our countries, including uh, Rwanda, uh, we were we didn't know what to do. We didn't know where to go. But after having uh, uh, guidelines, uh, framework, implementation framework uh, from GCF, then things are now easy. And they are better after implementing some of the projects. We saw what is the importance of reporting on time. We saw the relevance of having a, a, a tough monitoring and evaluation. So now we can build on what we have and start simplifying some of the procedures. Science countries has proven that they are able to implement, they are able to access funds. So uh, uh, those are the three uh, reflections I want to bring in. But uh, we salute this uh, uh, marriage because uh, it is it is really uh, supporting countries. I'm calling it marriage because when you see the impact on the ground, uh, when you are talking about irrigation, climate proofing our agriculture, when you see the landscaping, you can't differentiate. This money came from Jeff. This money came from GCF. You just see nice agroforestry. You just see nice irrigation scheme. You don't differentiate. This money came from here. This money came from here. That's why I'm insisting on that marriage. Thank you. Thank you so much for that marriage analogy. And... Um, if I may say so, I think uh, it has been an arranged marriage in the beginning. For us to even go to dinner it was a pretty awkward conversation. Fast forward seven years later, it's great to be able to have this kind of meaningful conversation with the two heads together. So I think the marriage is working. And I take your point, the marriage of resources, marriage of impacts, that's very, very important for the countries. And thanks for highlighting access implementation and i like your the way you said it's it's a long-term programming it's really a parallel at the country level of what we're trying to do on long-term vision for the jefflin gcf so thank you so much for that so now have we have a little bit of time uh, to open the floor for any questions or additional reflections from the panelists uh, would you like to say Okay, let's, uh, let's open the floor um, if you'd like to ask any questions or have any comments please identify yourself Yes, madam. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Edith Kirumba. I wanted to ask um, about the alignment in terms of the timelines that are taken to process the, the different, uh, you know, the, the proposals with the different agencies, the GCF and the JEF. Is there a plan to align them so that they kind of take a similar amount of time? Because as it is now, uh, one takes a bit shorter and the other one takes uh, longer. So what is the plan in terms of alignment on timelines of turnaround? It's a very good question on the timeline. Uh, there, let me let us take a couple more questions and go back to the panel. Anybody else wants to comment or have questions? Yes, sir, over there. Um, uh, th thank you for the opportunity to ask the question. Uh, for me, I know there's, um, he, he mentioned the marriage. Um, but now my question is, what are your immediate plans to, to address some of the things that you, um, you talked about? I'm more particularly interested as well in just finding out your, your plans for, say, a country such as Zambia. When can we expect to, to have some interaction with you? Thank you. Great. So let's take a third uh, question from you, madam. Uh, thank you very much. I'm from uh, Kenya. I want to build on the observation made by Rwanda and ask uh, how 
the, the process for the GEF to begin to accredit uh, national institutions so that resources can come through uh, national government to reduce the turnaround time and the administrative uh, costs. Okay, thank you so much for that. So can we ask uh, Yannick to start addressing that and I, I can also answer the question from the last uh, uh, person. There will be some limits to how much we can align our project cycle for at least two main reasons. The first one is that so we are speaking about different size of project. For example, GCF, uh, GEF over the past almost 30 years, no, has financed 5,000 national and uh, regional projects, and some is $1 million, some is $5 million. Uh, GCF has financed 209 projects, but some are north of $10 billion. And so uh, you do not have the same second level due diligence for a project of 1 million and a project of 1 billion. The, and that's the reason why I fully agree with the point uh, made by Madeleine, which is that so for us, what we have to make sure is that so we can move from, uh, uh, let's say, a $10 million of uh, GEF to uh, 100 or $1 billion to, from uh, GCF in a smooth uh, manner. So it's much more about how to connect the different type of funds. And uh, the, uh, in terms of synergies and complementarity, for me, one of the most interesting things is that so we, for example, GEF has a small grant program, which is truly exceptional, but truly exceptional. I've spent 10 years working on GEF, four years on GCF. That might explain why uh, the, uh, I do not see a big divide between GEF and GCF. The small grant program of uh, GEF it's, uh, it was, when I was there, it was $21,000, $22,000 on average. And we could never move from $21,000, uh, $22,000 to the $1 million of uh, the GEF medium-sized project. For uh, GCF, we have been asked a lot to, uh, to, to basically find new mechanism for uh, reaching out communities. The, uh, because our due diligence that works very well for hundreds of millions of dollars of projects is overbearing for small projects. And we are increasingly thinking uh, about uh, having pool fund of let's say $25 million that can be broken into 100 grants of $250,000. We approve the 25 million, the, 200, the 100 grant, grand grant are, are approved at the country level. That's it, we, us, we intervene only once. And uh, why 250,000? is because when we started discussing with GEF, we realized if GEF take, let's say 25,000 for GCF, as we bring the 25,000, suddenly we have a stare towards the 1 million. And after GEF or GCF can come in at 10 million or 20 million, and we can go beyond. So by, uh, by basically merging our uh, programming modalities, we suddenly have a full scaling up uh, pathways. So the first reason is that we are speaking about different projects. So rather than having the same project cycle, much make, much better to make sure that they complement each other. The second reason is because uh, the, there is a difference in the governance and the delegation of uh, authority. And so uh, the role of our boards and the role of the GCF Council are, uh, are, uh, are different. Thank you. So on the, the question from the, the third person about the expansion of the GEF partnership, um, at this juncture, when we just fi we just finished the, the negotiations for the Jeff A period, which started in the um, July of this year, part of the recommendations that came out of that is for us to look to see if we are addressing the priorities and needs of all the countries, all the regions, as well as all the sectors and uh, conventions we serve, right? So it's like a mapping analysis to see how are our 18 agencies addressing the, the priorities of the countries. Once that is done, then the potential question of whether we're going to, to look into additional um, expansion of agencies will be put on the table. So first we have to do 
the mapping exercise of how is the current 18 agencies addressing the priorities of the countries. So um, we expect this to go to our, our council um, in 2004, uh, 2024, fairly soon, and, and the ensuing conversation to take place for the JEF 9 period, which will start in 2026. So I hope that clarifies. Any other questions or comments, um, perspectives from the countries you would like to share after hearing everybody speak? Um, uh, Excellency, Madeleine, or Faustin, would you like to say add anything at this point, Dexter? Yes, I, I, I just want to add the private sector here. So uh, I, I think it would be good to see how we can uh, have this, uh, uh, this cooperation between GF and DCF in order to, to simulate the uh, private sector. I know for GCF, uh, private sector is not for grant, but Jeff can work for grant for private sector, in particular for small enterprise. So how we can maybe have these um, opportunities to, to have a, a, a mechanism that will help Jeff to start maybe creating the enabling environment for private sector uh, 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 working around the, the, the low carbon pathway, uh, 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 how we can move from that so Jeff can support them and we shift with the support of this year. So I think it would be good to, to, to see this kind of uh, uh, mechanism allowing us really to help the private sector to be on board uh, 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 through your, 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 your complementarity uh, approach. Thank you. Thank you, Madeline. That's a very good question. And Actually, we had a very interesting session on this topic yesterday afternoon. Um, so one example that we can highlight is through the SCCF, we supported a, a program project called CRAFT. And when we first went in to support this CRAFT initiative, which is uh, the first um, uh, private sector uh, equity to support adaptation actions, it was considered to be um, quite um, out there, innovative, really risky, and we came in to support it. And that was, in a way, a vote of confidence for other uh, supporters to come in. And eventually, that project went to the, the PSF, right? Uh, of the, uh, and it's, it's now been upscaled by uh, one of the entities called um, Pegasus. So we had a very interesting example of that. And another example that we're currently exploring is in the Jeff we call the, what's called the Challenge Program for Adaptation Innovation. Small, small, somewhere between one and two million dollars of grants. Anybody can apply. And we have a lot of private sector entities, a lot of funds, as well as people who want to create this kind of um, equity as well as risk um, taking um, initiatives, right? Some of those, we're in conversation with the GCF colleagues to see if those are proven to be very successful, can those be then relayed, if you will, into much larger upscaling opportunities with the GCF. Because in a way, we've taken a, a little bit of a, um, a higher risk for the proof of concept, as well as, um, I would say, building the confidence that it would, it would actually work. So I'm going to pass it on to Yannick. Uh, you see, I was about to mention the same project. The, uh, we, um, we financed a $400 million private equity fund for adaptation innovation, innovative adaptation technologies. And uh, this can be seen as a very risky proposition for uh, private equity investors. And uh, we were able to, to do it because the, we were building on a GEF project that uh, basically had developed, had proven that they were, they would be a strong deal flow. I mean, there would be a lot of projects the Ansagon had developed a, a methodology to assess the adaptation impact of different categories of projects. So it was 10 times easier for us to design the private equity fund. And after what we did is that we provided $125 million of uh, uh, first lost equity, where we, we basically we said the first to lose our money will be us. And so we built on the uh, knowledge that uh, GEF has acquired, and we use our capacity to de-risk investment through using any kind of uh, grant, non-grant instrument, and because we can use insurances, guarantees, equities, 
first lost uh, position, etc. So that's it. So, and if uh, the, this craft project might mobilize immediately, I don't know, uh, two to four billion dollars because equity is 10 to 20 percent. So it's not a small amount of money. Huh? But uh, much more importantly, if this project are successful, we will be uh, we will be dramatically increasing the range of adaptation technologies available, and we will be demonstrating that investing in new adaptation innovation is a legitimate investment. The, we have worked a lot with uh, GEF in, in a similar uh, manner. For example, we have developed another private equity fund for coral reef management, coral reef protection. Here again, you can imagine what people say when when uh, when you go to see institutional investors and you say, "We want uh, don't you want to invest with us uh, in uh, coral reef protection?" And uh, here again, the the ground work that GEF has done was worth gold. We have also a very large program for uh, providing uh, providing equity and debt finance to eco businesses in the Amazon, building on the capacity developed by GEF, building on the uh, deal flow. Uh, developed by GF. I don't know for those who are not familiar with uh, private sector parlance, the deal flow is very important. The evidence that there is a pool of investable projects. Thank you, Yannick. Um, before we close, do, are there any other burning questions from the floor that we can address? Okay, so this has been a very um, productive conversation and thank you so much um, Minister, as well as Madeline, Madam Chair, and um, Faustine, uh, Mr. Faustine, for coming to coming here to share your perspectives. Everything you have told us, we have taken note. It's recorded, and um, we are very serious about informing the way forward for the LTV with partnership with countries as well as inputs from the country. So we really appreciate your sharing your views as well as we heard some of the common elements of access simplification, capacity, knowledge. We will take these on board as we uh, implement the LTV for the uh, next couple of years. So now I have the pleasure of introducing my colleague from GCF, Pa Osman Jarju, uh, to deliver closing remarks. Thank you, thank you very much. I don't want to take much of your time to echo uh, the remarks that uh, this has been a very useful uh, a discuss on. We've had uh, the issues of efficiency, effectiveness, complementarity, and actually uh, the GCF ASEANIC indicated, the GCF ASEANIC indicated has been scaling up uh, some of the GEF projects. We have the EIF uh, small grant project that was also scaled up to a 10 million US dollar project, and uh, we have been told it's one of the best projects that was implemented in Namibia. Uh, so we would continue uh, to enhance on complementarity and coherence. In the project cycle, we have been doing this, but this has not been very visible. And I think it's good that we are now moving towards operationalizing this through these five pilot projects. And we look forward to reporting back to you next year uh, at the next COP. Thank you very much once again for your participation. <laughs>